did I give you guys an update on the 7.5? Because this is my week approaching week two. This is week two on 7.5 milligram of Terzepatide. And in a couple videos ago, I um, did a, I did a video on nausea, dealing with GLP-1 nausea. And that was specifically geared to my experience of nausea on 7.5. Like the first week, last week, the nausea was heavy. It was heavy from day one up until day four. And I was trying to figure out if I was doing something wrong. Um, I was eating protein. I mean, I, I never really hit the maximum amount of protein I'm supposed to take, and that's just me. I'm not gonna probably take over 80. I just go based on the protein allowance of comfort in my body. So how my body feels with the level of protein that I'm taking in. I'm not trying to focus and be like super anal based on other um, recommendations from fitness instructors, medical physicians and all that. As long as I have enough protein in my body to sustain each day and still maintain build, muscle growth in addition to other things I'm okay so in that sense I'm intuitive because if I'm if, if my body is telling me you know that's enough that's going to be enough with or without the medication okay I'm going to pay attention but good thing about this this good news is that approaching the second week which I'm in now so this is like the second day of the second week of the 7.5 there's advertise the nausea pretty much is non-existent it's pretty much non-existent i'm telling you the first day i injected the first week which was last week i felt it not too long after maybe a couple of hours after and then it was really it was really heavy so it was a good thing the next day i thought maybe it would taper off no it was heavy and in some in some parts of the day i felt like it was heavier so it was kind of throwing me off i'm thinking like hold on i need to get pregnancy test because this the symptoms were feeling too similar to pregnancy symptoms and i'm like i know i'm not i know i just completed my cycle da -da 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 -da. going through all these levels of rationale I'm like, this is this has to be the medication. If this is the medication, is this the level of nausea I'm going to have the entire time? So I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, look, if this is the level of nausea I'm going to have the entire time, I'm going to titrate down to five. But I really want to stay on it. I'm just thinking like, look, I need to just wrap my head around this for a minute. Maybe it's getting adjusted with my body because this is a new dose I'm taking. And keep in mind when you do take the dose, sometimes it does take a second for your body to get acclimated to it. And then your body also is going to experience sometimes um, strong effects right off the bat or semi-delayed, but it will come as an, as an effect of changing the dose, increasing the dose. So I definitely felt um, intense nausea. Now I no longer feel it. I don't I, I don't have that issue it was in the morning too so that's when it was really bugging me because i'm like hold on this is morning nausea and it's lasting throughout the day yo i thought that my journey was, was over i was ready to cuss him out cuss my man out i'm like look i told you we cannot <laughs> we cannot be doing a loose loose like we were while i'm on this medication especially when i tie trade you have to use like some type of other contraceptive when i'm just keep that in mind even though i'm still heavy on my birth control been on it for years so i don't think that's losing this effect but with the information going around about birth control and this medication it possibly low in efficacy because it's so absorbent i still want to be careful and mindful so when i experience this and i and it's mimicking pregnancy nausea Throughout the day, I was like, oh, is this the end of my journey already? I didn't got knocked, da, da 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 So many thoughts in my mind. But thankfully, no, because that was not the plan, and that's not in my plan right now. I have too much going on, y'all. Um, so that's not it, thankfully, like I said. Although there are blessings, um, sometimes in disguises. But, uh, <laughs> oh, my God, it's like, 
makeup. But it's tapered off, y'all. And what I think helped this taper off is my incorporation of Vital Proteins. Um, this is a super green drink mix. You mix in with your water. I blend it up in my Imagine Blender just so I can make sure I get all the blending greens. I don't like drinking, you know, powdery, any res powdery residue. I like it well blended. That had, like, all the greens nutrients in it um, for a couple servings of vegetables and fruit. Uh, I do, you know, I eat, I eat vegetables, I eat fruit, but specifically while I'm on this medication, I don't eat as much as I usually do, so I know um, I'm missing the vitalness of that, and it kind of acts as um, a probiotic, prebiotic in my opinion. Um, it's gut health. It balances out your gut health, and I'm telling you, when I drunk that, I really had no nausea issues for the day. So like I'm making the habit to make sure I drink that every day just because of the nutrients it gives. If I like more vegetables, but that definitely is a key to countering nausea. Taking some type of probiotic, prebiotic and prebiotic, gut biotic <laughs> supplement or product um, that definitely would help counter the nausea. So I'm so thankful for that. I feel great, actually. I'm feeling energetic. I don't feel fatigued. So I really think it was just me getting introduced to that therapeutic dose. Remember, you guys, it's a therapeutic dose starting at 7.5. You have 7.5 mg, then you have 10, then you have 12.5 mg, then you have 15. 15 is the very last dose available that is the highest you can go you cannot exceed that ceiling um, nor do i want to i don't want to get to that ceiling honestly i think 7.5 is enough for me so it's two weeks its own you don't know until you try it and see how it affects you and your eating your appetite suppression but it has been 100 percent on the appetite suppression for me and the cancellation of food noise uh so that i haven't been you know, having them snack attack situations in the middle of the night like I did when I was coming off of five milligrams, you guys. Uh, I had a little snack attack situation. Y'all know it was in that, uh, I spoke about it in that vlog video. I was just coming off the five milligram, waiting to start the seven milli 7.5 milligram the next morning. And I woke up hungry also with the incorporation of the protein, my vital proteins in addition, you know. I'm pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like really breezing on this now. Like I don't have the anxiety in regard to this medication now. Trying to figure, you know, like trying to figure out, well, why isn't I working? It's, it's not suppressing enough or it's over suppressing or I have it's suppressing but I have food thoughts and all that I feel like it's a lot of complication derived into these medications and when they're really built to be kind of simple it's just really simple if you could just follow three like simple steps of course you know take your medication as you should uh, and incorporate protein as you should even if you weren't on the medication, appropriate amount of protein, and preferably do lower carb. You have to you have to remain lower carb, but you know I would say if you're trying to like lose weight at a certain rate, I would say do low carb. You want to cut carbs to minimum. So I would say I would say uh, on a low carb day do 50. Don't go under. Um, excuse me. Don't go over 50 grams of carbs. You know, and then on a higher carb day, you know, set it to 100 grams of carbs or whatever. You know, do it like every other day. Like, keep your body fluctuating. Um, um, keep it in a process of burning the carbs, you know, and not the carbs just stacking up on top of each other and stacking. I find it easier for me, and I find it more giving. Um, I feel like... I'm not depriving myself. I mean, you know, I'm having carbs. You know, you know, often people are on a 
a keto um, diet or lifestyle or a, just a low carb lifestyle depending on how low their carb intake is it, it can be very limiting it can be strenuous because of the lack of variety you really have you just stick into straight protein and very minimal carbs so it can put people in different mindsets and then sometimes when you come off of it it can make you gain weight <laughs> right back as soon as you eat a carb um that's why it's important to kind of like transition off of keto appropriately don't just like stop keto and just start eating carbs high level carbs because you are definitely going to see a surplus in weight gain um just because yeah carbs do that <laughs> you want to see a surplus the, the recommendation is kind of just to wean yourself off that's why I do the every other day thing do that low carb then higher carb low carb then higher carb type of thing at least you know that's what i'm doing like if i ever want to wean off of it but for for, for me i'm not even high ketosis but for me i'm going to always play in the keto low carb lane I, I'm comfortable with it. To me, it's not deprivation. It's not at all for me. Like I said, you guys, I've been fasting for over 12 years. So my body's in a permanent fasting state. I'm used to eating one meal a day, give or take, just depending on how I'm feeling intuitively, maybe two. That's why my window, my intermittent fasting window is 17-7 fast for 17 hours and then I give myself a seven hour window to eat one meal or two meals a day type of thing um, with at least a couple hours for my food to digest before bed now you can kind of go like real extreme with it like some people would do like the 23 one so you fast 23 hours and then you eat only in one hour and I feel that can be a little complicated when it comes to digestion um, and so restricting what if you want a dessert or something you get what I'm saying so I'm like I need to at least have a, 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 a four to five at least window to be able to eat so I don't feel like I'm rushed because at the same time I still want to enjoy whatever food that I am eating y'all I don't want to feel constrained that I'm trying to shove all this food in my mouth in one hour remember it's only one meal you're trying to get all of your calories and trying to get all of your protein in one sitting and i believe in one sitting you only your body only can take but so much protein please let me know in the comments how much protein your body actually can digest before it turns into glucose um because i i, I definitely read up on some information about it but i can't pinpoint it but i know it's a certain amount of protein that your body only can um compromise and then whatever it can't, it will turn into glucose, which then will spike your insulin. So <laughs> it's so much into this scientifically, um, which makes me think that, you know, stop trying to over consume protein. Consume the amount of protein that you can within the, the meal periods that you choose to eat and within the um, allowance of your body. Because although you may have a set protein number of 120 or 140, if you didn't split that up in three meals or whatever, if you're a multi-meal eater, you're not going to be able to really get that amount of protein in. That's for the three meal a day eaters. Okay, see the pro the protein number for the one meal a day eaters are lower. Like for me, it's like 80, maybe 80, 70. Like for the, if I can get that in and all of that protein isn't really getting digested, my body's probably only compromising 50 of that. 40 of I don't know I don't know exact number maybe between 30 50 I don't know give me some information in there y'all be in here to engage share enlighten you know what I'm saying and constructively correct each other so I want to be on the same page with my protein but I know that is one of the key factors here to prevent nausea is protein intake probiotic gut uh, supplement in some way and water 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 because i also noticed that if i had nausea once i start pouring in the right amount of fluid in my body even over the amount i feel better now i'm drinking i typically drink over 64 ounces of water 
but at minimum i think that's really all you need is 54 ounces but on this medication i typically am very thirsty my mouth is always dry i always want to drink some some water so i just guzzling i'm always i'm gonna say guzzling but i'm always drinking and sipping water hence i'm always using the bathroom okay but it's cleansing me in a way and it's it's flushing out the nausea and whatever triggers me to get nauseous the water flushes that out so the protein the water uh and the uh pro and prebiotic gut supplementation they really help for the nausea even without taking any over-the-counter anything just doing those three things see what that does for your nausea you may see a major decrease in nausea creeping back up in the times that you usually would. Um, you know, of course, excluding triggering foods and stuff, y'all. Because y'all know that triggering foods prompt nausea. Also, what, waiting too long to eat can prompt nausea as well. And that can often can happen when fasting. Um, and it's not a necessarily a bad thing because I mean you're fasting, you are going to probably have uh, hung, hunger cues at a point, and depending on how long you're fasting, and if you're drinking enough water, you may experience some nausea, or not if your water is fluent. So just keep drinking the water. But once you do break that fast or eat when you're supposed to eat, the nausea should subside at least that's the experience i've had okay so nausea can be prompt for wait for waiting too long to eat triggering foods as well as strong suppression effects from the actual dose if it's a therapeutic dose so keep all that in mind y'all so i was just like y'all this therapeutic dose was kick kicking my butt the first week but I'm cool now, and now I'm in a mindset of even when I get to my maintenance weight, I think I'm still going to stay on it because I was entertaining, try titrating down for economic reasons too. Um, but also just like if I can manage on a low dose and, and still you know maintain the weight and it be cheaper, why not? Um, but if I can maintain on this. 7.5 I'm just for the main thing on it but for now I'm not in maintenance mode I am still in weight loss mode still trying to get off the 16 pounds so let go <laughs> we on it I got my hand on it and this 7.5 is what it's gonna be <laughs> and I'm feeling great y'all I really am I'm feeling wonderful it's a beautiful day today it feels fabulous there go my water right there y'all see all that water I consume just give me the liter bottle and I refill, okay? And I drink it all day. I probably get maybe like two of those in. What's that? 64 ounces. So two of those, that's like what, 128? That's a lot of water. So I think as long as you look, stay 64 ounces of what? Uh, water and above you should be all right y'all so like remember the water this thing will make you feel like sometimes you're not thirsty and it's weird because sometimes i would have experiences of not feeling thirsty but mouthy dry as but thirsty and then sometimes i am thirsty but often i feel like i'm not thirsty but I really am because it's all in the effects in my mouth. I feel it. I feel so dry. It's happened before and I've woken up in the middle of the night. Felt like I could barely open my mouth. Y'all. I keep that water right next to me, y'all, on the nightstand. Take a swig of that water throughout the night, y'all. That's how I be. Y'all really just gotta be watch and be careful, be mindful, okay? And be and be hydrated okay be hydrated all right i'm gonna get at y'all at the next video be real boo